Today, we dive deep into 16 things you had no idea were invented by the witty ancient Egyptians. The Great Pyramids weren't the only things the Egyptians ingeniously crafted, and most of which you'd be surprised to find out are staples of modern day lives. So better strap into your saddle, because some of these profound inventions from ancient times may blow your mind. Hello friends. Well, if you often fantasize about the past and really want to know about the history of ancient civilizations, then you're at the right place. Welcome to Unthinkable Past, a channel better known for dishing up the outlandish ancient traditions of all times. So, unlocking the secrets of the past can be a fascinating journey. But what if I tell you that the ancient Egyptians were hiding something even more incredible than their mummies and tombs? Yeah, from everyday items to revolutionary innovations, the ancient Egyptians were truly ahead of their time. Join us as we're going to take you on a journey through history, revealing 16 incredible inventions that you had no idea originated from this remarkable civilization. Just get ready to be amazed. Getting started with the daily essentials. Yeah, toothpaste and breath mints. Due to the presence of grit and sand in their bread, the ancient Egyptians had significant challenges with their dental health, and they often suffered with abscesses. However, despite the lack of dentistry during that era, they made attempts to maintain oral hygiene. So. Toothpaste was one of their most notable inventions to prevent them, though it was only available to those who could afford it. As far as the composition is concerned, toothpaste in ancient Egypt was made by grinding and combining a range of ingredients, including powder of ox hooves, salt, dried flowers, pepper, ashes, pumice, and even burnt eggshells, which probably made for a less than refreshing morning tooth care ritual. Anyway, this gritty paste was then rubbed in using either the finger or a primitive form of a toothbrush made out of frayed twigs. <laughs> yeah, the ancient Egyptians are also credited along with the Babylonians as the inventors of the first toothbrushes. Well, the next time you browse the candy aisle of the convenience store for Mentos or breath savers, take a moment to thank the ancient Egyptians for their invention of a way to mask the unpleasant odors that can emanate from our mouths. In ancient Egypt, as in modern times, bad breath often signaled poor dental health. While the Egyptians didn't consume sugary foods and drinks as we do, the stones they used to grind flour for bread contained a lot of sand and grit, as already mentioned, which contributed to tooth decay by wearing down the enamel and leaving the tooth vulnerable to infection resulting in smell. To combat this unpleasant odor of decaying teeth, the ancient Egyptians had another solution up their sleeve. Breath mints, boiled honey drops infused with fragrant herbs and spices such as cinnamon, myrrh, and frankincense were sucked on to mask the stench. However, they used to mix mint with their toothpaste to freshen their breath, a technique that is still used in modern dental products. Ancient Egyptians, to your awe, were also concerned about their dental health in the afterlife. <laughs> yeah, archaeologists have discovered toothpicks buried alongside mummies, presumably placed there to clean out food debris between their teeth in the afterlife. Getting further with personal care, ancient Egyptians also made use of makeup and wigs. Before the rise of ancient Egyptian civilization, the majority of human history was consumed by the necessities of survival, leaving little time for leisure and recreation. However, with the emergence of urbanization and organized systems in the Middle East and Egypt, people began to prioritize activities beyond mere survival. Yeah, you got that right. The ancient Egyptians pioneered the development of cosmetics and beauty regimes. While the desire to appear attractive to the opposite sex has always been a human priority, the Egyptians took it a step further by inventing numerous rituals and products designed to enhance a woman's looks. These products included a wax-like substance made of sugar for hair removal, and makeup made from natural pigments such as crushed beetles and toxic lead. Wealthy women who didn't have to work had more time to focus on their appearance, and beauty became a key concern for them. For your information, the ancient Egyptians were first to create a special kind of eye makeup around 4000 BCE, using a combination of soot and gelina to create kor, a black ointment still used today. They could also make green eye makeup by mixing malachite with gelina. Now, let me share a fun fact here. They believed that wearing thick eyeliner not only made them look fashionable, but could also cure eye diseases and protect them from the evil eye. However, Egyptians, particularly women, were also known for their use of wigs. While the cheapest and most commonly available wigs were made from vegetable fibers, the royal family had their wigs made exclusively from human hair, often obtained from the Nubian people to simulate the popular Afro style of the second millennium BC. Even Queen Nefertiti herself was said to wear such pieces beneath her crown. Then there were the barbers with shaving razors. As the ancient Egyptian civilization expanded, it was not just the women who embraced the new beauty trend. Egyptian men were also known for their attention to personal grooming, which was likely due in part to their belief that hair was unclean. As a result, they regularly had to cut their hair short or shave it off entirely. Even priests were expected to shave their entire bodies every three days. 
To help maintain their grooming habits, the Egyptians created the first shaving tools, which were made of sharp stone blades attached to wooden handles. They later improved on these tools with copper-bladed razors. They also invented the profession of barbering, with the first evidence dating back to 5000 BC, showing that men were employed to groom and cut hair and beards using flints and shells initially. Like modern times, styles came in and out of fashion. Sometimes it was desirable to be clean-shaven, and at other times, long hair and beards were in vogue. Interestingly, some of the earliest barbering was performed by priests or doctors for ritual or medical purposes. Even after it became a profession, barbers were still respected as skilled professionals. The wealthy often had their personal barbers to attend to their grooming needs, much like a butler, or had one visit their homes every now and then. Meanwhile, for the masses, getting a haircut meant visiting one of the city's street barbers. They would sit on benches under sycamore trees to receive haircuts and shaves, a very tradition that still exists in many cultures today. Coming to the written language and hieroglyphics. Although humans had been using drawings to communicate for thousands of years, the first writing system didn't emerge until much later in Egypt and Mesopotamia. The earliest forms of Egyptian writing were pictograms, simple pictures that represented words and ideas, but they had limitations. As time went on, they added more elements to the system, including alphabetic characters that represented sounds and other characters for names and abstract concepts. Today, hieroglyphics are what come to mind when we think of ancient Egyptian writing. They consisted of a mix of alphabetic and syllabic symbols, as well as ideograms that represented whole words. Hieroglyphics found in tombs and other places tell stories about war, politics, and culture, giving us insight into ancient Egyptian society. Well, Egyptians can also be credited with inventing paper and ink. Their paper was not the same as the paper we use today, but was a precursor made from a plant called papyrus that grew along the Nile. The exact process of how the Egyptians turned the papyrus plant into a writing surface is still uncertain, but it's believed that the stems were cut into strips, soaked, and laid down in overlapping layers. They were then compressed through hammering, rolling, or pressing until the layers fused to form a flat surface. Although ancient papyrus was not as smooth as modern paper, the dry climate of Egypt meant that documents made from papyrus lasted a very long time. And, to make use of papyrus as a writing service, the ancient Egyptians had to come up with some form of ink. The first ink was made of mixing vegetable gum, soot, and beeswax to create a black pigment. Over time, they experimented with different materials, such as red ochre, to produce a range of coloured inks. Moving on to the calendar and timekeeping. Although the Mesopotamians had already created a numerical system for time, the Egyptians developed a calendar and methods of timekeeping that we still use today. Based on the cycles of the sun and moon, the Egyptian calendar consisted of 12 months, each with 30 days, and an additional 5 days at the end of the year to make it 365 days. While they only recognized three seasons, farmers used them to decide whether to plant or harvest crops. The Egyptians also invented the first timekeeping devices. The earliest known sundial was discovered in 2013 in the Valley of Kings, dating back to around 1500 BC. However, it wasn't the first timekeeping device. Obelisks constructed 2,000 years earlier were also used to tell time based on the shadows cast on their engravings. Around the same time as the first sundial, the Egyptians also created the water clock. These timekeeping devices allowed for a more efficient and organized society, potentially enabling many of the other innovations made by the ancient Egyptians. Let's check out their door locks. Next time you lock your door and turn the deadbolt, don't forget to thank the ancient Egyptians for inventing the door lock. The first door locks were created around 4000 BCE and were essentially pin tumbler locks. A hollow bolt was inserted into the door and pins were used to manipulate it when a key was inserted. When the key lifted the pins, they slid away from the bolt, allowing it to be withdrawn. However, these locks had one disadvantage, which was their size. The largest locks were up to 2 feet, or 0.6 meters in length. Egyptian locks were more secure than the locks developed later by the Romans as they used a simpler design with a spring to hold the door in place, which was hidden inside the door. And compared to Egyptian locks, the Roman ones were relatively easy to pick. Then it's their furniture. Well, chairs and tables may seem like ordinary objects, but before the ancient Egyptians invented them, people had to make do with sitting on the floor or small stools and using primitive benches or large blocks as surfaces. However, Around the middle of the 3rd millennium BC, the art of furniture exploded into Egypt, and intricately carved pieces began to be created. The Egyptian tables were mainly made of wood and alabaster, with a smooth platform raised off the ground, supported by either a pedestal or legs, which could be separate or detachable. These tables were used for dining, writing, and playing board games. On the other hand, the Egyptian chair was a luxury item that only the elite could afford. <laughs> yeah, the wealthy and royal Egyptians enjoyed proper chairs with backs and armrests, these chairs were made of precious materials, such as ivory and ebony, adorned with expensive metals and intricately decorated with carved figures of animals, plants, or deities. 
Glassmaking was another Egyptian novelty. Well, around 1500 BC, skilled Egyptian craftsmen were creating colorful glass, ingots, and containers. These vessels were made by winding hot glass filaments around a ceramic-like core, shaping the vessel and adding handles and a rim. Once the vessel had cooled, the core was removed. These early core-formed vessels were typically small flasks meant for holding perfumed oils, essentially making them the world's first perfume bottles. Ancient Egypt was also an expert at metallurgy. So, by 3000 BC, the ancient Egyptians had found that by combining a small quantity of tin ore with copper ore, they could create bronze. And compared to other metals available at the time, bronze was tougher and more long-lasting. As a result, the Egyptians started deploying bronze to make a variety of objects, including tools, weapons, armor, building materials, and decorative items. Time to see the Egyptian contribution to medicine. In previous civilizations, like those that arose in Mesopotamia, illnesses were often thought to be a result of the gods' work and were treated with religious and magical remedies performed by priests or exorcists. However, ancient Egypt gave birth to medicine as we know it today. While they still believed in the supernatural, the Egyptians took a more scientific approach to healing, as they created medications from natural resources, including minerals, herbs, and animal products, and even performed early forms of surgery. From as early as 2200 BC, medical facilities known as Houses of Life were established, where doctors and priests practiced medicine. These centers were dedicated to enhancing and safeguarding human life, and could even be seen as precursors to modern hospitals. The ancient Egyptians not only advanced medical knowledge, but they also established the world's first public health system. In the village of Deir el Medina, built around 1500 BC to accommodate the workers who constructed royal tombs, a shared physician was provided to attend to the health needs of the laborers. This included the provision of monthly wages, food, and servants, as well as sick pay when necessary. Although this system was initially implemented to ensure a steady supply of workers for the pharaoh's grand tombs, it's evident that the Egyptians made considerable progress in the fields of hygiene, diagnosis, and treatment. As such, modern medicine owes a great deal to their innovations and understanding. Let's have a quick look at their surgical instruments. Well, the collection of surgical instruments from ancient Egypt housed in the Cairo Museum is quite impressive. It includes an extensive variety of tools, such as scalpels, scissors, forceps, spoons, copper needles, hooks, probes, lancets, and pincers, along with papyrus highlighting instructions for the suturing of wounds and descriptions of using swabs, bandages, adhesive plasters, and cauterizing. Ox-drawn plow and sickle are next on the list. As early as 2500 BC, the ancient Egyptians developed the first plows drawn by oxen. These plows were made of bronze, which helped score the earth into furrows with ease. Once the earth was scored, workers used hoes to break up any clumps of soil before sowing the rows with seed. Along the Nile's fertile banks, the Egyptians cultivated various vegetables and wheat, and to harvest grains such as wheat and barley, they used sickles with curved blades. Here, we must not forget the canals and irrigation channels. The Egyptians were pioneers in developing systems of canals and irrigation channels to direct water from the River Nile to fields situated far away from the river. They constructed gates within the canals, enabling them to regulate the flow of water and reservoirs to store water for use during times of drought. To lift water from the river, they invented the shadouf, which consisted of a long pole equipped with a bucket on one end and a weight on the other. The bucket was lowered into the Nile, filled with water, and raised with the help of water wheels. Oxen then swung the pole to discharge the water into canals for irrigating the crops. Now, let's talk of some of their entertainment. Yeah, Egyptians are also credited to invent bowling. <laughs> well, during the early 19th century, an English archaeologist named William Matthew Flinders Petrie carried out significant excavations across Egypt. In almost 3,000 tombs, Petrie discovered personal belongings and objects intended to safeguard the spirits of the deceased. Among the findings was a set of skittles, uncovered in a child's grave dating back to 5200 BC. Initially mistaking them for vases, Petrie and his team soon realized that these were actually stones, shaped like skittles making this one of the most unexpected ancient Egyptian inventions. While the ancient game was different from the modern, highly competitive version of bowling, the Egyptians still enjoyed rolling balls at stationary objects from a specific distance. There were no specific surfaces or alleys to play on, and the pins were likely not uniform in shape. The balls themselves were made from various materials, including corn husks, leather, stone, and porcelain. Other ancient civilizations, including the Romans, adopted this primitive form of bowling and developed it into the game we know today. And last, but definitely not the least innovative concept, was the police. As urbanization and centralized power grew in ancient Egypt, a structured law enforcement system emerged. The first ever police force was established around 2500 BC to regulate and patrol the Nile ships and boats, safeguarding them from thieves and ensuring that trade and the economy could flourish. 
By 1500 BC, the Egyptians had formed an elite paramilitary police force called the Medjai. Originally, the term Medjai referred to the nomadic people from Nubia, who served as the first policemen. However, it soon became synonymous with the force as a whole. The Medjai were entrusted with protecting the pharaoh's most precious areas and possessions, such as his capital city, borders, and palace. Unlike the current police force, the Egyptian police did not engage in any detective or investigative work. Victims or prosecutors had to provide their own evidence. Their primary responsibility was to maintain the regime's order and stability by punishing lawbreakers and rebels, often using cruel methods. What's funny here is that they trained and used animals like dogs and even monkeys to capture criminals. So you see, the ancient Egyptians left us with an enduring legacy that extends well beyond the pyramids and Halloween costume ideas. Their remarkable inventions and discoveries have greatly influenced the world we inhabit today. In fact, many of the things we take for granted in our daily lives, such as applying makeup, sitting on a chair, are the direct result of the innovations developed by the Egyptians thousands of years ago. Well, there you have it. We hope you liked this video. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel without a delay. Make sure you turn on the post notifications, and also let us know in the comment section about your views on these ingenious inventions from ancient Egypt. Did you really have any idea? Thanks for watching Unthinkable Past. Until the next time we meet, continue learning and stay healthy. Goodbye.